friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming at you with a very, very autumny video and you can see that I'm really excited because I've got my leaves and I've got my fire hazards. <laughs> Today I wanted to show you my five favorite types of books for autumn. Why did I have to clap so much like that? The microphone's probably just gonna love that. And you might be thinking, girl, there's a type there's a type. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. Autumn is the time of year for introspection and reinvention. Kind of like you're a caterpillar about to enter its cocoon for the winter before you emerge a beautiful butterfly. There is equal amounts of light and dark, life and death with leaves turning color and leaves falling off completely with bare branches that haunt us in our dreams. <laughs> the first book that I'm showing you is easily the most important book that I've read all year. It is called Light the Dark, Writers on Creativity, inspiration and the artistic process. It is a compilation of 46 different authors answering the question, what inspires you? Each chapter starts off with a quote from a different book that the author themselves was inspired by. And then they explain how that quote shaped their views on the world and ignited a certain spark or passion for writing. Even if you're not a writer, I highly recommend this book because it has easily recommended me to 46 other books that I need to read. <laughs> There's a lot of diversity in this book with the types of authors that they choose to include. There are people of color, there are people of the LGBT community, there are people of different religious backgrounds. There is one chapter called All Immigrants Are Artists, and it is by Edwidge Danticat. And the quote that this person chose as their inspiration was, It's not the same, Bobby. I'd tried, but he shook his head. Of course it is, Mijita. All your life is a work of art. A painting is not a painting, but the way you live each day. A song is not a song, but the words you share with the people you love. A book is not a book, but the choices you make every day trying to be a decent person. That quote is from Patricia Engel, it's not love, it's just Paris. This book is just like having 46 different guides, teaching you how to navigate the world, teaching you how to think about things, just thinking in general. There's nothing better for me to cozy up with than something like this. My next favorite type of book for Autumn is something that brings me back to go forward. And what I mean by that is something that reminds me of the types of things that I used to think and believe as a child. Because I think one of the most important things in life is to connect with your inner child at almost all times. So I like to read children's books a lot this time of year, and one of my favorite universes of all time is The Hundred Acre Wood, Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. I have always really been attracted to the Hundred Acre Wood. The peace, the serenity, the endless day, and the cozy nights. It's a very safe place to learn lessons. And when I read Winnie the Pooh or The House on Pooh Corner, The Tao of Pooh, The Tay of Piglet, it's a very comforting way to learn new things. I recommend children's books when you want to feel whimsical and magical and pure. I recommend children's books to anybody who is feeling stressed out or anxious or disconnected from themselves. If you've been feeling like you've become disconnected from one of your favorite childhood series, maybe now's the time to pick it up. The flip side of autumn is the darkness that it brings, and I am personally a huge fan, a huge fan of spooky books, mystery books, horror books, slasher books. Oh honey, I am a walking trigger warning, like you would not want to talk to me about horror books lest ye be warned. This month I have been reading this book, which is called That Which Grows Wild. It is a collection of 16 dark works of fiction, all by the same author, Eric J. Guignard. All right, Guignard, Eric J. Guignard. It is very equal parts whimsical and magical and also completely horrifying and sad. <laughs> In the first story, the world has been so highly affected by global warming that people just kind of start to spontaneously combust and burst into flame. There's a story about this poor munchkin from Wizard of Oz that was clearly very sad because, spoiler alert, it did not go well for him. He did things to himself. In another story, a father tries to save his children from these giant mutant hoppers that have been taking over the planet, and he winds up drowning and dying and then cutting off his leg and then shooting himself in the head. And you know, I just recommend a good spooky book. A 
Around this time of year, I start thinking a lot about the things that I have already done and the things that I want to do next and who I'm going to need to be in order to get those things done. So during fall, I tend to think a lot about my career and for that purpose, I get self-help slash career books, and I have two that fall under this category. The first one is called The Working Woman's Handbook. Let me explain. When I first saw this book in the bookshelf, I will not lie, I had a bit of a woke moment. <laughs> I looked at this and I was like, why? You think that just because you're pink and you're so thick and your pages are so aesthetic, uh, and because you have quizzes and because you have little introspective questions and charts and you think that because you read like a magazine that I'm just gonna want you. I mean, I do badly. Like, this is incredible and I hate you for being so good at knowing who your target demographic is. <laughs> This book is not what I expected it to be, and I'm really happy that it wasn't. It is literally a book of ideas, insights, and inspiration for a successful creative career. It has different sections from everything on starting businesses, to networking, to mindset, to being your own boss, and honestly, it made me feel very empowered. <laughs> At the end of each chapter, you get a series of interviews from female entrepreneurs, and you also get self-development exercises, which I am a sucker for a good self-development exercise. We know this. As simple as this book is, I don't think I'm ever throwing it away. <laughs> like, there's so much stuff in here that I just tend to forget because it's not stuff that I think about, so I'm glad that I have this tiny little, very well-marketed millennial ladies handbook. <laughs> this next book in the same category is called Make It Happen by Jenna Herbert, The Creative Entrepreneur's Guide to Transforming Your Dreams into Reality. I reread this book this month, and when I first bought this book, it was at the very beginning of the year when I was feeling stuck and not really sure of how I was going to turn anything I wanted into reality. I tend to seek guidance from books, whether it is from a fictional voice or from a self-help perspective, and this book was incredibly worth it. The beginning of the book comes with this little contract. By signing below, I'm committing to myself to make it happen. And the contract comes right after the introductory chapter, which basically states, girl, who the hell told you you weren't capable of reaching your dreams? Of course you're capable. Are you stupid? No, you are not stupid. So basically sign this contract because you're gonna make it happen. The book is separated into three parts. Part one is what will you make happen, which is about committing to yourself the author's story of how she made her dreams come true and then presents a case study of an entrepreneur. Part two is about actually making it happen, the process from start to finish. And then part three is now it's happened, what the hell do you do next? This book was one of my biggest comforts and guides at the beginning of 2019. And after reading it this month, I just feel ready. Come at me, bitch. No, I'm kidding. I won't call you bitch. Come at me, Sally. My last type of book that I really like to read for fall is something whimsical. Something that takes me out of the world that I'm in and places me in something that I would have never thought existed. This book is called Elsewhere by Gabrielle Zavin, and it is a fictional book about a teenager who dies in a bike riding accident and then goes to heaven. And it's basically the story of what it's like after you die. In this universe, people age backwards when they reach death. So our main character reaches heaven when she's in her teenage years, and then she starts to age backward up until the point where she reincarnates as a new person. I bought this book years ago, and it took me years to finally sit down and read it because I wasn't ready. <laughs> for whatever reason, I was not ready to get into a fictional book. I was too lost and searching for guidance in nonfiction and self-help. I finally decided that it was time to just sit down, decompress, and put myself in somebody else's shoes that just didn't exist. I have always loved the idea of reincarnation and life after death and just the mystery of what happens to us beyond this plane of reality. And because the main character, Lizzie, has such a hard time grappling with the loss of her old life and having to come to terms with this new life after death that she didn't know existed, it helps me do the same, letting go of whatever we've lost in the past to make room for transformation 
in this new life. In this universe, Picasso's still alive and creating paintings, and Marilyn Monroe is a psychiatrist helping people deal with depression. Love it! Those are all of my book recommendations for fall. I hope you really enjoyed this video. In the comments, please let me know what you are reading and if you gravitate more towards a specific type of genre for fall. I love you guys. I will see you in my next video and have a wonderful week. Goodbye!